I'm asked on almost a weekly basis how to shoot music videos in slow motion and maintain sync. Well, it's actually not that difficult. The most difficult part of doing something like this is actually convincing the artist to go along with you. So here we have our AIF file right here on the desktop. and I'm just going to boot up Final Cut Pro. The goal here will be to take the song and add timecode to it, a visual timecode that we can play back in our iPod and to use that as a slate. Let's just drag from our desktop the song in here. I've started a brand new project, so I'm just going to save the project here before I continue. We'll just call it Alyssa's Song. And we have a default sequence here. Now this sequence, before I actually put the song into it, I just want to bring up the sequence settings. And this is a default NTSC sequence. And I'm just going to change it to 23.98 frames per second. And I'm doing that because eventually the video will be shot in 24p. So I just need the timecode to run at 24p as well. I'm going to set the timecode for 00, 59, 50, 00. So it'll give us a 10 second lead. There we go. So just go down here, type 01, and then hit the period button three times to go to the one hour mark. Just drag in the track. So there's our track. It starts exactly at one hour. Just play the track. There we go. Next, I want to add some slug to the video, the video track, just so we have something up there. Just going to unlink audio. And just insert it in. Let's just stretch it out as much as we can here. Just bring the slug back, and if there isn't enough slug to cover the whole song, just throw some more in there. And then let's just put a two beep in, just uh, the 5800. Bring up bars and tone, NTSC, and we'll just relink the audio just so that we get the little beep in there too. Okay, so we've got a two beep in there. So I'm just going to name this sequence timecode source. Now I'm going to make a brand new sequence. Call this one real time playback. And once again, I'm just going to go into sequence settings, set it for 2398, timeline 005950. Let's open up our new sequence. It's blank. And we'll just drag timecode source into there. So now we have a nested sequence with our two beep and everything. Now on the video side, we're just going to add a video filter. And it's going to be a timecode reader. So now it's reading the timecode from the source sequence here. And you'll see if we just open that up, hit the return button, go to filters. There it is. Now I'm, I'm just going to increase the size make it nice and big and move it right here in the very center because this will eventually be on an iPod so we want to make sure it's it's really really readable I'll just move it over here that looks pretty good now we have an instant timecode slate this can be put on an iPod and I'm just going to export this as a QuickTime movie real-time playback put it in my movies folder use the current settings audio and video make it self-contained. Okay, so now that's on the hard drive and it's in the movies folder. Real-time playback. Now I'm just going to drag that back into the project. There it is. Make a brand new sequence. This sequence will title it Overcrank Playback. There we go. Now let's just drag this quick time in there. We're not really worried about the time code of this new sequence because it, we're just going to use it for a QuickTime file. So I'm just going to select the whole thing, hit Apple and J to bring up speed, or Command J, turn off frame blending, and set the speed to 250%. I'm using 250% because that is the exact relationship between 24p and 60p, or 2398 and 59.94. 250% difference. So once this is sped up 250%, it becomes a lot shorter, but you'll see it says a minute and a half here on the sequence, but the timecode is still referencing the original timecode on the original track. It's just running a whole lot faster. So let's just render this so we can take a peek. 
So here we go. It's all rendered. It's working. She's singing at 250% speed. The only problem is she sounds like a chipmunk. So we'll just select the uh, audio tracks. Go to audio filters. Apple filters. And let's let's pitch it down. And let's just, in the pitch, just punch in minus 1500. And that should bring us down fairly close to what the original pitch was. There we go. It's still fast, but the pitch is not bad. So, let's just export that sequence now. This is our overcrank playback. Export as a quick time to the Movies folder. Great. Now we're going to open Compressor. Once Compressor is open, just drag these two QuickTime files in there. Highlight them both. Settings. Choose iPod Video. There we go. Submit. And once those are compressed, just drag them into your iTunes and sync them with your iPod, and your timecode slate is all ready to roll. Got it. So on our video shoot, we shoot all of the takes in 60p. This is an HD 200, so I'm using 720 60p. And then when we get back to the edit suite, what we have to do is convert these files into 24p. This is how we do it. Now if we look in here, we'll see that we have an awful lot of M2T files. Now I also shot some stuff at normal 24p, and I shot those directly to HDV uh, QuickTime. So not, we don't need to do anything to those, but these M2T files are all 720p60 files. So we need to convert those. So now I'll open up MPEG Stream Clip and select Batch List. And then I can just take these M2Ts, drag them all into here, choose the task, Export to QuickTime, sounds good. Select. Now for Codec, Ideally, you would use uncompressed. For now, I'm just going to use Apple Intermediate Codec. It works quite well. Let's crank that up. I'm not going to put anything in for frame rate because I want the frame rate just to stay exactly what it is right now. I want it to stay at 59.94 frames per second and turn off the interlace scaling and reinterlace chroma. Upper field first. That's where it should be, so don't worry about that. We'll just say to batch. And now they all get dumped into the batch. And you just hit the go button. Go. Okay, so our files have all finished converting. Now let's launch Cinema Tools. And we're going to use Cinema Tools to conform the frame rate from 60 down to 23.98. Now just select Batch Conform. And then just direct Cinema Tools to your folder, 60p converted. And just select one of the files, it doesn't matter which one, just any of them. Choose. We want 23.98. Click Conform. We can quit Cinema Tools. Now let's bring up Final Cut Pro. And you'll see that Cinema Tools automatically put all of those files within the 60p converted folder into a conformed 23.98 folder. I'm just going to drag that whole folder in here. And now we're all set to start editing in 24p sequences. And it will be very easy to sync up the timecode to the sequence. Here's the result.